What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. 2022 was another phenomenal year for fishing, wildlife, and cinematography, and I can't wait to get started with 2023. I figured it would be a good idea to ring in the new year with some of my favorite highlights from 2022. Hope you guys enjoy it. Stay tuned. Look at all these reds, guys. Really cool stuff. All sizes too, ranging from 15 to 30 inches. There's actually a couple black drum that are swimming with these redfish, which is really neat. There we go. Tons of reds right here, guys. I don't want to scare the school. It's a nice one. There we go. So got some fight. Come here, buddy. All right. We got him. Solid. There he is, guys. That's way over slot right there, but uh, it's a really nice fish. Not a keeper. He's probably a good 28 inches, I'd say. 27. It's nice, man. One more look at him, guys. Beautiful red. Oh, stunning. Here's the release on this butte. There he goes. Awesome. The male was still on the bed and continued to showcase his unappreciation of the unwanted visitor that we dropped on this bed. We were losing our minds over too many close calls, but eventually the male let his guard down and swam off with the bait in his mouth. He dropped it shortly after, but as Philip reeled the bait back in, it got slammed like a swim bait. He fed the fish plenty of line, and the second time was the charm. The next day, we brought back another GoPro, as well as our buddy Parker. Here's some bonus footage that does a great job of capturing the action that pre-spawn bass fishing has to offer. Enjoy. There it is. Oh! That's so the GoPro's getting all I know, we're gonna have such sick footage of all it. Thing is, the water is plenty clear enough. There it is, there it is. Oh! She's yeah, they avoided. start, there's a bigger one behind it. No, so what happened is yesterday is I think the one that is there is a smaller one. The, the, all, everybody else comes in. And <laughs> I think so, yeah. There was, there was, yeah, a little nip at it for a while. Got it. No. That's sick. That's sick. That was in the frame. I think like all of it's in the frame. I mean, the GoPro is probably going out to like that. <laughs> Look at him. No, it's so fun. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, dude. Oh, look at that. That's a huge fish. <laughs> Wait, this is the dinner table. Dinner table. Dinner table. Oh my god, a huge fish just. Yeah, no, there's big female. It's just so sick. so sick. Jerk it. Big jerk. Oh my god, it's in his mouth. No, he's got to do it. He's going to drop it. He would just want it off of his head. I'm actually going to try casting it out a little bit. I feel like a live thing. Yeah, I know, it'd, it'd crush it instantly. There we go, come on. That's gotta be the one. Ooh! Oh, man! 
Oh, the big girl's getting a little hype. Come on, big girl. Come on, big girl. Come on, big girl. Dude. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Nah, I want you in frame. I want you in frame. Come on, you gotta be good for the camera. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Get it out of the freaking grass. Oh, there's three now. There's three now looking at it. Come on. That's perfect if you eat it right there, dude. That's perfect if you eat it right there. You are so annoying. Eat them. <laughs> oh, yo, he's hungry, bro. This man just licked his lips. <laughs> Are you maxed out? Yeah. And this one's a whole lot bigger? That thing just crushed it, dude. I got, it was like a thump. You think it's bigger than the last one? Yes, I do. Uh, the, is the light still on? Yeah, oh yeah, I got it. Man was peeling on max drag for a while. So. Oh no! Wait. Still on? Yeah, there might be some small Oh, oh dude, that's a big run. Are you still maxed out? Yeah. Holy. Nah, dude, I'm putting like, this is a lot of pressure on this fish. Yeah, just constant pressure, bro. I really like how high we are up here, though. It's good leverage. Keeping them off. high angle. <clears throat> I gotta get on this side. Better lighting. Dude, I hope it's a big bull. Bro, this is nerve-wracking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I feel like anything can go wrong. I don't know. No, have confidence in your rod. Have confidence in your knots. Confidence in the gear and knots. I'm just not confident in the snags around here. Yeah. Have what confidence in the landscape. <laughs> you want me to put out the spotlight again just to see where the line's going? Yeah, I think you just took another like 40 yard run. <clears throat> yo, yo, oh, that's him right there! He's not that big. He fought hard though. I guess that's what happens when you have a ridiculous current on your side. There he is. Yeah, that's a bull. Actually, he doesn't have a ridge, so it's not a bull. Alpha C, dude, or somewhere. Okay, 78. so he's six foot, six foot six, six and a half feet. Hey, look, dude, he has a little. Uh, or six foot four. He has the guy on him, the cleaner. Oh, he's got a remora. Yes. Six and a half footer. Easy. That was a bite. Yeah, I saw that. Someone totally nipped at you. Oh, let us it. Let him eat it. Let him eat it. You got him. Oh, got him. Oh, let me eat it, let me eat it. It's coming. Got him. Oh. <laughs> Put it right back out there. Put it right back out there. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Remember to cup the spool so your line doesn't come off. Oh no, I don't know if that's where he was. Was that where he was? Yes, he fit in. All right, easy does it, easy does it. Oh, it's a brook trout. It's a brook trout, Ethan. It's a beautiful brook. Ah, dude, that is a beautiful brook. How we do it? Awesome, go for the release. Bro, he just made it like right here. Nice, dude. Oh, he's just chilling. Yo, he is just chilling.
I am guilty of staying close to my comfort zone, and this trip was a great opportunity for me to escape it. This was my first time visiting Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and only my third time seeing the Pacific Ocean. Colossal desert mountains meet the raging seas, creating a color contrast that cannot be described with words. The beaches are characterized by stunning rock formations shaped from the constant erosion that they endure. The changing tides turn crevices into tidal pools, giving rise to another world below the surface. The rocky coral pools host an unfathomable diversity of marine life. Damselfish, wrasse, and blenny dominate the pools while showcasing some of the most vibrant colors in the animal kingdom. The two species that stick out the most here are blue damselfish and Cortez rainbow wrasse. My personal favorite fish were these guinea fowl puffers, which were not shy at all and actually showed interest in my GoPro. At one point, a long arm made its way out from a rock. My guess is that it belonged to a brittle star, but y'all can let me know if you have any better ideas. In another pool, I noticed sand being thrown from a small cave, so I left a camera facing it for about 15 minutes. I was very excited to see an eel when reviewing the footage. I am unsure what kind of eel this is, so please comment down below if you do. Welcome to Florida, the fishing capital of the world. Let's do it, buddy. Yeah! <laughs> Max has a huge snug. Max has a huge snook! Oh! You're doing great, dude. Keep them out. Remember you have your pedals in the water. There you go. Keep them right there. Here, I'll get out and get ready to grab them for you. Just bring, just bring them like right over here. Tired quite yet. Oh, he's on the gill plate. Hey, hold him up, hold him up. Oh, I'm shaking. My good. Whole body is shaking. Grief, dude. <laughs> See if she can start swimming on her own. Just give her a big thrust with your backhand. Yep, she's swimming. Boom. Yeah, dude! <laughs> Let's keep fishing! Spring is finally here, which means it's that time of year when life re-emerges. In case you're new or haven't had the chance to get caught up with the videos, this year I've had the opportunity to help my friend Parker with a herpetological survey on a cypress swamp. We had some remarkable encounters on this outing with some of the coolest animals to cross paths with. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Well, she ain't moving, unfortunately. Oh, there's one in there. I saw it. There's two, dude. Oh, yes, sir. That's totally fine, dude. That's so sick. There's the mud. Eastern mud. And Spotty. 
And he's a new one. Let's go. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Cool. Look at him. Both of them are new. We can just we can put all the turtles in here. In here and Good stuff. Do you want me to? Yeah, just put the chart back in. Okay. Okay. Sick. Endangered species. That's crazy. That was funny. I didn't even see it. I could tell it was in there. I could see you just heard his hiss. <laughs> and the fact that we already got two is crazy. Or just one is cool enough. There's some fish in there. Oh, there's a, there is a turtle. What is it? I think so. Another new one, dude. That's crazy. There's so many of them. It's ridiculous how many turtles are in, in this thing. little tiny wetland. And look at the size of those are some healthy crawfish, dude. Do I take them out or just throw them back? I throw them back because I mean, like... <sighs> sick. Some big crawfish in here. Freaking giant crawfish. That's a male, hundred yeah. percent. Right. So, I'm, I've been doing that scoot and that scoot, and you just, you hold it like that, and make sure that it's, but it's not in the way. You kind of love it. Mm -hmm. And then you just file down a little triangle. My turtles are annoying because they always move. <laughs> but just enough so just that... Just make it noticeable. Yeah. You only go too far because if you go too far, you'll, you'll start bleeding. Mm. But like that's perfect. Okay. See? So when I yeah. catch it, all I'm looking for are those little marks. I'm gonna do this one over deeper. Dude, they're both out. You may be wondering what all the hype is around these spotted turtles. The first thing you should know is that this species is endangered, mostly from habitat loss. They also rarely exceed six inches in length, with most full-grown individuals hovering around four inches. For the most part, mature males and females can be easily identified by the appearance of their plastron. Males are concave and females are flat. Also, males typically have a large thick tail while females have a much smaller one. For immature turtles, most of the time males have darker eyes and a brown or black chin while females have orange eyes with a lighter brighter chin. However, color is not considered a reliable way to identify sex, so try using other differences before you resort to it. This was my first time seeing spotted turtles in person, and it was incredible to witness a thriving population. Parker has been part of the herpetology community since he was born, and before the survey he had only seen two spotted turtles in the wild. On this property alone, he is now up to 26 unique individuals found within three months. This just goes to show how special this place is. After taking a couple minutes to snap a couple shots of these amazing animals, it was time to process. Step one was to collect quantitative data on their size. We recorded the plastron or bottom of the shell length, carapace or top of the shell length, shell height, and shell width. Next, each individual sex is identified and they are inspected to see if they are a recapture. Every turtle is assigned specific letters of which the corresponding scoots are marked. When viewing a turtle from above, the first outer scoot near the head is considered letter A, the second clockwise from the first is B, and so on. Typically, Parker assigns two letters per turtle. A small filing tool is used to make these marks. These markings do not hurt the turtles and do not interfere with their mobility in any way. A DNA sample is taken from each, preferably a tiny tail or nail clipping, and after processing, all turtles are set loose to go about their business once again. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This one is going to cover my final Florida trip for the year. It was a grind to say the least. We had hopes of timing it with the mullet run, but unfortunately we were too early. However, there were plenty of exciting moments worth seeing, so stick around. Oh, we got picked up, Joseph. Yeah, he's probably really big. <laughs> that was so cool. Oh my gosh. Oh.
Here we go. All right, we're on. <laughs> oh Lord. Here we go. I'm getting towed. Oh shoot. Yeah, he's probably really big. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm getting towed. Bye, Philip. <laughs> Dude, imagine if he's hooked perfectly in the corner. I'm just not. All right, see ya. Yeah, sh sure, I mean, I might be on this thing for a while if he's hooked well. Or if you want to follow me so I don't die. I'm just trying to keep like, not a lot of pressure on him so he doesn't like freak out too much. Proceeds to freak out. This is, dude, I think this is a big bull shark, honestly. Or like a decent size. Cause he's not like super fast. Oh, this is interesting. This is probably the biggest fish I've ever hooked from the kayak. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't bite us off. He will eventually, it's only a matter of time. Oh, it's a thousand percent a shark. Slow, steady fight. That's the plan. You might not be super big. Maybe like five feet, I don't know. I have no clue if he really knows he's hooked since I haven't really put a whole lot of pressure on him yet. He's coming in though. But he's not moving that much at all. He's just dead weight. I'd like to take a, I just want to see him. I want to see what species it is, how big it is. Once he realizes he's coming toward a kayak that he's going to lose his mind, I think, and probably bite off. Oh, he tried to go there. Maybe he's not that big because he's, I feel like he should be freaking out at this point. He might not be that big. Yeah, this is my mullet the whole time. Dragging me around. <laughs> I wonder if it's a lemon shark. It honestly could be. Or, but I, I don't know. Eating a big live mullet on top is not very lemon shark. Hey there. Not very lemon sharky. Big boy, come on. Yeah, I can't see the shark yet here. I'm gonna try to stand up and look at him. Oh, dude, it's a big bull shark. He's actually a pretty like fun sized shark though. But the issue is I can't really control him. <laughs> okay, he's waking up, he's coming toward you. <laughs> yeah, go that way, go that way. Let's go back over here, bud. Let's go back, nope, you're going the wrong way. Oh, there he goes, he bit off. Yeah. It's fine, I'm not worried. That was cool though. Alrighty y'all, Joseph is hooked up. Get my rod out of the way. All right, my rudder's up, my paddles are up. Uh, he's not coming up, so it could be a shark. Could be. Well, you said you saw a roll on my bait, right? It looked like a tarpon when it hit, but I don't know, your, your bait was on the surface, which is why the seagulls were all on it. Yeah, he's not really moving like a tarpon. He's moving like a bull shark, but. Joe's going on a trip. <laughs> yeah, that's no tarpon. I think it's a shark. I. But at the same time, I don't know. Moving a lot like a shark. 
really heavy. Yeah, I'd say you can just sit down and start paddling backwards. No way I land this thing, bro. This thing should not be hooked still. <laughs> oh, he's swimming with me, dude. You're awesome. Dude. <laughs> sure, man. Let's go right over here. He's cooperating insanely good. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to beat you over there so I'm not in the way. Okay, maybe he's not cooperating. Yeah, see if you can beat me over there. Oh, I think we'll be good here. Oh, actually, yeah, sure. The pedals and um, rudder just need to come up. Yeah, the nice thing is he's close enough not to worry about. Maybe. Oh, a little, little boil. You don't have that much endurance in Oh my gosh, the boil That's is absolutely fish. massive. That's a bigger fish. <laughs> Getting closer little by little. Maybe, hopefully. It would be pretty cool to at least see him. The thing is, is it probably be, it'll probably come to like landing it, like actually getting him. No, yeah, when he like, when you grab his Getting mouth, him. he's gonna freak out, thrash around, open his mouth, and close yeah. his mouth. You can't, we can't grab the leader because it's not big enough. I'd be satisfied, yeah, if like we can get him in the shallow part. Oh, Good lord, <laughs> he's big. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh my gosh <laughs> yeah that is, that is a big big shark oh. must be right in the corner All right, yeah oh. he is huge <laughs> I don't die from stingray. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I'm definitely a shark. Yeah, it's a shark though. I'm gonna give him three seconds. Alright, Phillips hooked up. Another shark, unfortunately, but let's see if we can get this one in and get a closer look at it. I'm not sure how big it is, but he's getting towed right now. Just reeling in my bait. Oh man! He is moving fast. He's getting towed. <laughs> oh man. Look at him go. I like the technique. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, head shake. Keep this GoPro pinned up here. There's a whole lot of sharks going on in here, man. It's crazy. Ah, oh. oh, uh, there we go. There he goes. He just popped off. Yeah. <laughs> Still looked like a fun sleigh ride. Yeah, yeah it was.
On the way back to Charleston, I decided to stop by at Amelia Island to visit my parents and do a little bit of exploring. I had one solid window to get out in the kayak to do some fishing for trout and redfish, so I decided to leave the big rod behind just to make a little more space. A little did I know that this would be one of the biggest mistakes that I have ever made when it comes to fishing. It's got a really strong outgoing tide on this bridge right now, but if I can somehow, wow, it's trying to suck me in, look at that. But if I can somehow figure out a way to grab some live shrimp, like if I can find some a good mud bank to throw a net on, then I bet dropping some live shrimp by these pilings would be a blast. You could probably catch sheep's head, redfish, big croakers, black drum, things of that. Oh wow, whoa. Good. Was that a tarpon that just rolled? Or was that a dolphin? I don't know if you guys just saw that. There's either like a 150 pound tarpon that just rolled, or it was a dolphin. I think it was a dolphin, because that thing was monstrous. I just want to see you come back up. The fact that it hasn't come back up yet, very well can mean that that was a tarpon. It just, it looked too silvery to be a dolphin, you know? And the dorsal fin, there would have been something messed up with the dorsal fin if it was a dolphin too. I didn't get the best look at it. But that honestly might have been a big tarpon rolling. That would be insane. I would lose my mind, dude. Wow, that was a blow up. Tarpon, dude, tarpon, dude. Oh my God. I don't have my big rod with me. You already know what I'm doing tomorrow morning. That was like a solid 50, 60 pound tarpon. That means the one that I saw earlier had to have been a tarpon and it had to have been a huge one. Tarpon going ballistic. Yeah, that was another tarpon. The things I would do to have my big rod right now. There he goes, dude. This is an all tarpon. This is all tarpon. And look, he's coming back up for more. There we go, dude. This tarpon is going insane on these huge mullet. We have to go tarpon fishing tomorrow. That's the only, dude, that is insane. All right, all right. We have to, I just wanna go check this out. This is some of the craziest things I've ever witnessed. Dude, he is just going ballistic. It's insane to think a fish that size has enough power to move like that. Throwing that much weight around, completely out of the water. You see, yep, there he goes again. But he's still working them, look. All right, we're gonna try to get up to where he's working these mullet and see if we can, get a cool glimpse of what he's doing. Mullet are sitting on the surface. They look really spooked. I just want to get, because I know the GoPro, the issue with the GoPro is it's a pretty wide view. So I know that y'all probably, there he goes. I know that you guys probably are not getting the best view of this, but it is spectacular. Spectacular, here he comes, he's coming up. Dude, I might, oh my God, wow. I know I'm technically not, that was so cool. Y'all had to have seen that one. I think you guys saw that one. I really hope you did. Here he comes, they're coming right toward me. They're coming right toward me. They're coming right toward me. Come on, do it right next to me. Do it right next to me. They're really spooked. <laughs> I don't want them to jump in the boat. <laughs> All right, they're behind me now. I could probably throw a big swim bait and get him to eat. He is just so fired up. I also don't know if this is one tarpon or multiple.
There we go. All right. Little redfish. Oh, oh, they're so pretty. I saw a boat go into the creek that I wanted to fish, so I figured I'd kind of give them their space and mess around on this flat. Paid off. Look at that. Haha, <laughs> first red, man. Oh, that gets me so pumped. So pumped. Perfect. Awesome fish. He's ready to go, he's green. It is so easy to get wrapped up in the chaotic hustle of the summer in Charleston, but just to skip away from the crowds, there's a place that outdoor enthusiasts call paradise. Fishing is just a bonus when you find yourself lost in a place as beautiful as this. But let me tell you, Parker and I hit the jackpot. Here, docks and seawalls are replaced with cypress trees, and the commotion of traffic fades into the tranquil songs of Mother Nature. These waters are home to the swamp's most prehistoric freshwater fish, including gar and my personal favorite, the bowfin. Oh yeah, there we go. Breaking the ice, getting it done this morning? Yes sir. Hopefully more to come. Blessed with the presence of the bowfin. Not to mention, the tannic waters grow some of the state's biggest largemouth bass. So join us as we trek through this beautiful ecosystem, tracking down some of the incredible fish that it hosts. There we go, fish. Ooh, he's fighting, dude. Oh, big fish. Oh, dude, is that a bass? You're giving that, dude, that's a stud bass, I think. Yeah. Oh my yeah, God. it's a stud bass. Oh my God. Oh, dude. dude. That is like a five pound bass. More, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it just came on hooks. Oh wait, no, it didn't. Dude! Give it a scale, right? Yeah. Five on the money. Five on the money, so a little less than, yeah, he's under five. He's probably four. Ooh, check that thing out, dude. That's, that's yeah, that's a really healthy fish. He's probably pretty close to five. Look at that thing now. Check it out, dude. Haha, <laughs> it's sweet. All that's right. a thumbnail right there. Yeah. Look how dark they are, dude. Like. Yeah, river bass, it's man. It's from the, it's all from the cypress leaves, right? It's kind of like, the tannic yeah, the water. in the water. Mm -hmm. There she goes. It's basically, the water is just basically cypress tea. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. Bofin, yeah. Dude, he, he followed it all the way in. 
and ate it right at my feet, dude. I think the camera got that too. There's a fish on there. Yep. He was right on that log. Hola, senor. What's up, dude? Gosh, they're so cool. This is six pounds. Oh, he's met a bigger bowfin in his life. Ready? Yep.